Welcome to the Interesting Podcast with Jedi Brian, episode number 26. This episode is Savannah Kiefer, or as I like to call her, my new Star Wars BFF. Now, I've known of Savannah for a while. Uh, we're both in the same uh, garrison, the Florida garrison of the 501st, and so we have a lot of mutual friends, but we've never actually sat down and talked uh, for any length of time, really, um, and we really hit it off. We uh we get we get pretty deep into Star Wars. I'm gonna tell you guys right right off the bat. Um, it was great. It was great. Uh, we talk about how she got into Star Wars. Um, who her favorite character is, the new Ahsoka book, our mutual love of aliens, um, different parts of Star Wars that made us cry. Celebration London. Ashley Eckstein, who I'm a big fan of. Um, we talk about the dorky diva, which is Savannah's thing. Uh, she has a podcast as well. You should totally check out. Um, there's also a little announcement that I drop in here of a uh, maybe another podcast I'm coming out with in a couple weeks. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but yeah, you'll find out. So without further ado, here's uh, episode 26 with Savannah Kiefer. Roll the theme song. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hi. Good. How are you? Good. Can you hear me all right? I can. Awesome. Awesome. Just checking. Levels are weird. What um what recording program did you end up choosing? I ended up with Call Note. Oh, good. Yeah, all I had to do was like sync it up and check the settings, make sure that they were right, and then it just kind of does it. It's the least amount of editing afterwards that I've found. Nice. <coughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, it works out, works out. Good. So, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. I just uh, finished my last class for the day, so that's exciting. I don't have to uh, do any homework tonight, so that's good. That's always a plus. I just get to talk about Star Wars. Yeah, right, which is pretty much all I ever do anyways. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to school for? Um, my major is public relations, and then I'm minoring in photography. That is a very good combination for the things you yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to major in photography, and then I was like, well, I'm a little scared of getting an art degree because, like, you know, getting a job and all that stuff. So I was like, all right, I love PR, so I'll make photo my minor. And it's worked out pretty well. I'm glad I didn't major in photography because I know some people that are photo majors. Yeah. And they literally spend their entire life, every second of their day is basically in the photo lab. Oh, boy. So I'm happy I don't have to do that. That's crazy, especially now that yeah. everything is digital. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, and uh, I took a class. <laughs> when was it? It was last fall. It was a black and white film photography class, and I literally spent 30 hours a week in the dark room just printing and processing images. Oh, man. What is that like? I've never it been in crazy. a dark room before. It's it's really, really fun, and it's really exciting to just see your picture magically appear in, like, a chemical bath. Sure. But I don't like doing it for school because my professors always had different taste in photos than I did, so I would, like, be super amped about a photo that I took, and then they'd be like, well, you could change this part about it. And I'm like, but I like that part about it. So sure. having to cater towards somebody else's taste was not so fun but if you're just like printing images for yourself it is super awesome like it's really fun that makes sense especially when it comes to you know art <laughs> yeah <laughs> to be, like, exactly to have your art uh criticized by somebody else who may not have the same taste it's like shouldn't have the yeah same and they're like everybody. well you're breaking the rules i'm like well i'm gonna break the rules because right. i like it this way <laughs> handle just mic drop yeah. the camera <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't want to drop that. <laughs> yeah, good idea. That's very expensive. Uh, no, I, I think a lot about that. I, I dabbled in photography for a little bit, and then I realized that if the pictures aren't moving, my attention span leaves. <laughs> yeah, 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 that makes sense. I would love to get into more 
videography, but like right now I just, I don't have a ton of time for it, sure. but I think that would be really interesting to do. It's, it's a, it's a passion of mine. That's what I've always liked. Videos That's good. Stuff. Had a video when... company for a bit. Oh, cool. It's a lot of work. That's good when people <laughs> have like an interest and a passion because I meet so many people that are like, oh, you're so into Star Wars and I'm not into anything. I'm like, well, I'm sure you are. You just don't realize it. So I like it when people know what they're passionate about. For sure. I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. I, I don't, I actually don't know. I don't understand the concept of not being really into something. Cause I guess just the way that mm -hmm. I'm wired, like, mm -hmm. like I saw, I saw an article maybe like two weeks ago where it says the average, the average Star Wars fan actually doesn't spend all their time thinking about Star Wars. And I was like, what is, what does that mean? <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. I do not understand the concept. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that is literally all of my brain time all the time yeah <laughs> yeah who is snoke what is the deal with episode eight exactly. can't wait to see the han solo standalone oh, i was man. in film class today and i was like kind of drifting off and thought and i was like oh man i really can't wait for the han solo movie <laughs> <laughs> i have so many things so i was like like just last week i was thinking i was like i wonder i wonder if count dooku's lightsaber when he was a jedi was curved or if just his new one is curved. Like, these, yeah. these are thoughts I have. <laughs> yeah, those are good thoughts. We time. need answers. <laughs> yes, yes. It's nice to talk to someone who's, who gets it. <laughs> that's awesome, yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's actually uh, the perfect uh, semi-segue. When did you first get into Star Wars? So I became a Star Wars fan when I was really young. Um, my mom grew up watching the movie because she was at that perfect age where she got to see them in the theaters when she was like I think seven years old when the first one came out oh, perfect. um so she grew up on them and then I have an older brother who was really into the movies when I was growing up and when I came around I was just born into this family that loved Star Wars and it was played on our tv pretty much every day and uh, my brother had action figures that he played with so um, I didn't really have a moment where my parents sat me down and they were like, okay, well, we're going to watch Star Wars for the first time. Like, I never had that moment uh, because I was always just surrounded by it. But I really, um, I think I became a Star Wars fan and, like, loved it for, for what I wanted to love it for mm -hmm. uh, when The Clone Wars came out because I had seen the movies. I had seen The Clone Wars micro series, which I absolutely oh, loved. Phenomenal. Yeah, that's like the best, one of my favorite things about Star Wars is the micro series. But when the animated series came out, I would watch it with my brother every like Saturday morning or whenever it came on. And I enjoyed them, but there was something that wasn't grabbing me really in the first season. Sure. And then the second season came around and I was kind of like, well, I'm not going to watch this anymore. And my brother was like, oh no, Savannah, there's this new character in the show. You need to come watch this episode. And it was the very first episode with Cad Bane. And I was oh. like, hold <laughs> up, this guy freaking rocks. For and real. so Cad Bane like really sucked me into the show. And then I got really obsessed with clone troopers. And then it just spiraled, spiraled out of control there because I was at the right age where I was discovering the internet and all the fan communities online and blogging and forums. And I became a part of a forum that was specifically made for young girls that were into star Wars. So Ooh. it was exciting for me to, um, to meet other people that were my age and they were also girls and we shared the same interest. Um, and it was fun. I, I was literally on that forum probably at least five hours a day, just because I was so excited to talk with them about, the new episode of Clone Wars and new things that were coming out with her universe and all that. Sure. So um, that really threw me into the obsession that I have now was mainly realizing, wow, there's a lot of really unique characters in Star Wars and there's a lot of people that love it and a lot of people that are similar to me that love it. So that's kind of how it started. But I, I don't have one of those stories where, you know, my mom sat me down and was like, okay, we're going to watch A New Hope for the first time. Like, I didn't have that. It was just, I was just born into it, basically. That's pretty awesome. It's, and, and like, semi, I don't want to say rare, but uh, uh, rare <laughs> that it was your yeah. mom, you know? Yeah, yeah. My dad actually, um, he never saw the movies growing up. And he watched them when the special editions came out because the day they came out my mom went and bought them on VHS and brought them home and showed them to my dad and um I wasn't around for this moment but I she told me about it and 
she said that he was like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, what's the big deal? And she was like, Oh my gosh, we need to have kids so I can suck them into it. (laughs) Um, That's awesome. So anyways, yeah. So he's not super into it. And he actually went to go see The Force Awakens with us on opening night, which was exciting. And he sat through the whole movie because typically if we're watching Star Wars at home, he won't watch the whole thing. Sure. Uh, But yeah, my mom is the one that is like super into it. And she also cosplays with me. She's in the 501st. So she's she's the enabler. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. I I remember my first uh, Star Wars memory. I was like five, I want to say. And mm. I went to visit my cousin, and her boyfriend was a huge Star Wars fan. And I remember walking into his living room, and episode five was on, where oh. Yoda was lifting up the X-Wing. And, like, my brain could not put together how this little green guy was lifting something without touching it. Oh, that's awesome. And I was like, what is this? And then years <laughs> later, when episode one came out, it was game over. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. I love it when people have moments like that where they can specifically remember when they first saw it or first got into it because it's neat to see how it differs for, like, different people. And I know some people have played with the toys and then they saw the movies, but for me it was all kind of – it was, like, just all at once. It happened at the same time. And you you had, like, the perfect base that your family had laid to where (laughs) – the second you fell down. Yes, I'm a part of the group. (laughs) That's awesome. I know um, I'm actually starting a new podcast. It's going to be released in a couple weeks. Oh, Um, cool. A buddy of mine, his name's David, he grew up on the games. So he liked Star Wars, but, like, Rogue Squadron was his thing, and he's always loved flying, so that translated to X-Wings and playing those games. And he liked the movies, but they were like, he's like, oh, they're really good movies, but it never went any farther. <laughs> Sorry, I think I lost you. I just switched over my um, Wi-Fi to data, so hopefully it doesn't do that again. Ah, right on. But yeah, his, um, his, his end was games. Um, oh, that's and, cool. And he never, he's never seen Clone Wars. Uh, what? And I was like, that's what I said. I was like, we need to fix this. So our podcast yeah. is me and him watching every episode of the Clone Wars and reviewing them. Oh, and it's like his actual reaction. Like yeah, he, this will be the first time he's seeing it. Oh, that's exactly. awesome! And it's and it's literally right after. Like I have the podcast equipment set up. We watch the episode when it's over. Pause the credits. Start oh, recording. this is gonna be awesome! Yeah. Clone Wars, Clone Wars is so great because there are just so many different groups of characters in the show. Like I love. Uh, the Death Watch. I love right. all the clone troopers. There's just, oh, there's so many good stories. And then there's like Savage Opress and the Night Sisters. And right. oh my gosh, Spe- I can't wait to listen to that. Speaking of what you said, we we just finished season one this week and started season two last night. And he is all oh. about Cad Bane. Yes. All about it. Everybody loves Cad Bane. You can't not love him. He's like the Star Wars Clint Eastwood. I mean, he is. He is <laughs> he's so, he's like space Clint Eastwood. You can't not like that. He's, I describe Cad Bane as what everybody thinks Boba Fett is. <laughs> oh, that's, I'm stealing that. <laughs> Go for it. Think of it, because, you know, that's everyone's perfect. like huge Boba Fett fans. I was like, he doesn't really do anything, and he's not the best bounty hunter out there. Cad Bane, on the other yeah. hand. <laughs> he is, and he's ruthless. I and mean, Cad Bane so... doesn't hold his breath for anything. No. He's like, if I don't like you, you're dead. And the second there's an exit, he's gone. Yep. That's the crazy uh, thing. He, my, my friend David is a big, his, his previous favorite villain was General Grievous. He loved ooh. Grievous from the movies because he said... And he's funny because he puts everything into, like, real-life perspective. So he's be like, wait mm-hmm. a second, Ahsoka, when she's running forward and Rex is behind her and she turns her lightsaber on, she needs to be careful because that lightsaber, like, Rex could run right into it. And, like... Oh, my god, He has that perspective, which is really funny. And That's awesome. When he talked about General Grievous, why he was his favorite, is because this guy has no Force sensitivity but goes up against Jedi and can kill them. Yeah. And he's like, that gap there is insane. And now with Cad Bane, <laughs> he's like, yeah. this guy. <laughs> he is nuts. all about business. I really liked uh, Grievous in the micro series because yes. that's when we saw him before Revenge of the Sith. And exactly. he was like massive. He was a big dude in the micro series. <laughs> and he was super, yeah, he crushed people. And he was just massive and very dark and mysterious so i don't really i don't know how to say this i'm not a super big fan of grievous in the movies and the animated clone wars series but in the micro series i'm all about him and i remember 
seeing the episode for the first time where he came into the picture and I was like, whoa, what is this guy? Like, he's not really an alien, but he's not a human. Like, he's machinery, but what is he? And um, he was, like, the coolest thing oh, when yeah. I was growing up. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I remember when they debuted his first look was, like, on Star Wars Insider. And it was, like, oh. it just said the Jedi Killer on it. And I was like, what is oh, this? Oh, dang. Getting to the point. <laughs> yeah, right away. And then he's like, he has a collection of lightsabers. And I was like, oh my god, no! <laughs> and when that <laughs> when awesome. that happened, you know, that episode, you have, like, you just hear breathing and voices, and then it's quiet. And then the one Jedi, yeah. like, screams and runs out there and gets crushed. And he just takes on Jedi yep. Masters and kills them. I was like, what is this thing? Yeah, just snapping them like toothpicks, honestly. Right? That, 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 that micro-series is actually one of the only things... Because I'm, I'm for when they wipe the slate clean with the canon. Mm-hmm. I'm for it. I read tons of books and comics beforehand, and I love them, but when you put them together, not a lot of them fit. You know, right. some stuff was weird, like the Emperor cloning cloning himself a thousand times to live forever, and like some of that's yeah. like, well, we're just going to... Fr- well, it's okay, they got rid of that. But, right. But one of the few things I was like, oh, it sucks they got rid of that, was the reason General Grievous is coughing all of episode three. From the micro yeah. series, Mace Windu crushed his chest cavity, but yeah. now that's not canon anymore. The the actual I I got Pablo Hidalgo to answer me, which is cool. <laughs> and um, oh, the, that's nice. The canon version of what happens is being a cyborg and uh, a creature don't really mix well. So it's like he has breathing problems because that's what happens when you become oh. a cyborg. I was like, that oh, makes sense. That's not as cool. But, uh, like, exactly. it makes sense, but it's not as cool. Exactly. And I, I, I wish they, and I know they really can't do this because mm-hmm. it's not canon anymore, but I feel like newer fans need to be aware of the micro series. Like, I, sure. I have some friends that got into Star Wars uh, just because of The Force Awakens. They were, like, on the hype train. They were like, oh, let me go see this movie. And then they went back and watched the rest of the movies and they love them and now i'm telling them okay go watch clone wars but i'm showing them the animated clone wars because it's on netflix sure but i just remembered the micro series is on youtube for free i think yeah, yeah. um and i need people to be aware of the micro series because there's so many cool characters in that show and just the artwork alone is oh it's phenomenal gorgeous. Like, what? yeah what? and it's like the best form of storytelling because there's very, very little dialogue and yeah. everything is based on like hand gestures and in the music and sound effects. Mm-hmm. And I just, I could talk about this for hours, so I'll stop. I do talk amazing. about it for hours. <laughs> that, uh, it's a great show. Yeah. Um, I talk about David cause I spent a lot of time with him now watching Clone Wars. Um, and his favorite character in all of Star Wars is Mace Windu. And it's because of oh. that series. Yeah, I can totally see it. He fights the stamp. <laughs> yeah, it's there's crazy. a lot of cool uh, Jedi in the micro series that were developed more in that show. Like I can't remember his name. I can never remember his name. But remember that, like the wolf Jedi. Yes. He, looked, he literally looked like a wolf. Like he, he, he was, was the, the coolest winner. thing. The, he was legit. Yeah, yeah, he was awesome. It's so I liked in the micro series as well. They had the Athorian, and we got to see them yeah. use the like neck vibration earthquake thing. Yes, that was oh. cool. I love the micro. I'm gonna series. go have. I'm gonna have to watch that again pretty soon. You should. It's phenomenal. Um, yeah, I watch it a few times a year. I'll get on YouTube and I I watch it because one of what well, I think either one or both of the volumes are on there for free. That's awesome. I think I bought them when they came out. They're like sitting around here somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> so I should probably I need, buy them too. I need all of this. <laughs> um, who's your favorite Star Wars character? Do you have one? Uh, this is hard. Can I break it up into like movie and show and stuff like that? <laughs> yes, yes, you can. We okay, will, we will allow so, it. So, Clone Wars, totally Cad Bane all the way. Right. right. Movies, um, for the original trilogy, I'd have to go with Han Solo. Um, similar to Cad Bane, I like the whole smuggler swag thing, sure. kind of scoundrel. Um. And then for the prequels, I really like, and she doesn't get any like backstory really, <laughs> sure. but I love Zam Wessel. Oh, so, Zam's awesome. um, like I, oh, that is like my dream costume to make one day, one day really? I'll do it. Um, but I love her. Um, and then for the force awakens, uh, it's a 
toss up daily, I'm trying to pick over Ray or Finn. Sure. Uh, I I mean Ray is freaking amazing, and I think Finn is hilarious. But I'm I'm oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm more in love with Finn or John Boyega because they're both great. Yeah. Uh, sure. it, but Ray is just amazing too. So I I like them a lot. So I have to break it up. And then then there's Rebels. Oh my gosh, oh, there's Rebels. Oh my god, Rebels. <laughs> and I have to say Sabine, but sure. Hera is also amazing. They so, really are. They, Star Wars knocks it out with characters. <laughs> and then there's Ahsoka. I mean, okay, and my story with Ahsoka is that I profusely hated her Me throughout too. the entirety of Clone Wars. Me I too. hated her. <laughs> and I was constantly annoyed that everybody loved her and I was like the only person who didn't. I'm like, she's whiny, she's irresponsible. I just there was something about her that just annoyed me. Yeah. And now that I've seen her in Rebels and I've I read the Ahsoka novel. I have seen her grow up, and I feel like I've grown up with her. Sure. Um, and it's just one of those things where I really do appreciate her character now because she's gone through a lot. Like when that. Oh yes. Um, <laughs> season. What was it? Season five, I yeah, guess, where she one. was exiled, um, or yeah, you know, when she left. basically left. Yeah. Um, that was like, whoa, that's some deep it, stuff. And when it happened, it didn't mean a lot to me. But later on, I went back and watched it, and I was like bawling my eyes out. I was like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, this little girl. Sure. Um, so I like her character a lot, but it's not a, she's not a character that I always loved. But I, I love her a lot now. I am, I am with you there. I hated Ahsoka. I, I, you know what it was? I didn't even just – I didn't just hate Ahsoka. I hated her existence <laughs> <laughs> in the sense that, like, it didn't make sense. Because uh, right. I kept saying, I was like, wait a second, you're telling me in episode three, when Anakin gets on the council and they won't grant him the rank of master, he's not going to be like, hey, did you forget about the Padawan I had for like three years? Right. And, you know, obviously we didn't know at the time how it the fallout was. So mm -hmm. having seen it all, of course he wouldn't bring her up because, well, look what happened. <laughs> but, oh man. Right. She just, and then having her say Artui rubbed me the wrong oh, way. It still yeah. kind of bugs me. <laughs> and Sky yeah. Guy. I was oh, like, yeah. I get the Sky Guy, but you're talking to Anakin Skywalker. I get it, right. but I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, it was like the first, uh, definitely the first two seasons that I, that I couldn't stand. And then got better in the third season. And then by the fourth or fifth, it was even better. But it really wasn't until she walked down that ladder or climbed down the ladder in Rebels when I was like, yeah. oh, my gosh, she's so grown up and beautiful. Right. And I, I was so emotional. I was like, oh, my God, I hated you, but I love you now. Right. And then after reading the book, I was like, man, she has gone through some crazy stuff. Right, right. What did, what did you think of the book? I finished it last week. On like I loved it. Um, I, too. I'm honestly going to read it again because I read it a couple months ago when they were sending out advanced copies. Ooh. Uh, so I can't remember all of the details and now everybody's talking about it because it's out now. Right. So I'm going to read it again, um, by this weekend. But anyways, I loved it and Ditto. I want to talk about something, but I don't know. Are you okay if I spoil something or if I yeah. discuss is, something? Okay. Right now, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler listening. Spoiler alert for <laughs> yeah, the book. If let's you haven't get read into it, it. <laughs> skip this little part. Yeah. Um, the little, I don't know what they look like in the finished copy of the book because I read the advanced copy, but they had little like flashback kind of scenes or yes. flash or whatever scenes, and they were on gray pages. And one okay. of those little scenes was about Obi Wan, and yes. at the very end, oh. Qui Gon was like speaking to him through the Force, and he was like, "Obi Wan, yeah. let go." You're and I was like right bawling my <laughs> freaking eyes out. <laughs> it was so good because. I love anything about Qui-Gon and I love Obi-Wan. So whenever Qui-Gon gets brought up in current Star Wars stuff, I flip out. Um, Ooh, and that was like a really right great guy. addition. <laughs> Do what? You are talking to the right guy. I, oh, yeah. anyone who knows me more than five minutes knows I'm obsessed with Qui-Gon Jinn. <laughs> He's my favorite character That's in awesome. everything, everything of all of it. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yes. Like hands, wow. hands down. I love if we well then I'm sure you like that part too. Okay, so here's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I I got the audiobook. Okay. And I got it on purpose because I know Ashley Eckstein reads it. Right. And I was like, I wanna hear Ahsoka tell me the story of Ahsoka. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> and I remember I was typing something out and I had <laughs> I was ch I had my phone next to me and I was listening to it <laughs> and I was like, oh blah blah and then I was like, Obi Wan I was like, Oh that's kinda cool. That's kinda cool. And the second I heard Quagon, I literally was like Oh, 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 I stood up. I walked around the room. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
and I, I had I freaked out Any, anytime anytime because he's there he's he's, yeah. he's the he's the ultimate Jedi he's the perfect example of what the Jedi are supposed to be they're yeah. compassionate they uh, are not stoic you know the Jedi went wrong the second they became generals Qui-Gon wouldn't have been down with it Qui-Gon was right. the maverick you know, even Obi Wan was like, you know, if you just stop disagreeing with everybody, you'd be on the council. He's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't need that noise. Like, he yeah. he was the one who knew Anakin was the chosen one. Everyone else is like, I don't see it. And he goes, you know what, Obi Wan, send him to the trials. I know I'm right. This is it. Yeah, I, I love Qui Gon. So, I tweeted at E. K. Johnston, and I was like, hey, thank you. I cannot Aww. thank you enough for putting Qui Gon in your book because you don't know what this means to me. I, uh, I'm going to get emotional. That was literally my favorite part of the book, so Ditto. that's awesome. And I loved all the scenes, too, with, like, R2-D2 oh, because, yes. I mean, Ahsoka had been around him for so long. And, like I like I said, I can't remember all the details because I read it a couple months ago, and I honestly have the worst memory. And yeah. <laughs> I read the book in a day, so I kind of sped through it. Respect. So now, so now that I need – now that it's out, I need to read it again and sort mm -hmm. of – slow it down and, and absorb all the details but that was one detail that i was like game over gonna go cry in a corner for a yeah. few minutes and i'll be back <laughs> that was great especially because throughout the book she mentions like oh i miss r2 r2 could yeah. be here. he could save me blah, blah blah but then in the end you find out and then bail is <laughs> when bail is watching security footage of his two guards that got knocked out and he sees it's ahsoka and r2 yeah. is there and he's like you little you troublemaker you yeah <laughs> <laughs> you knew for a fact what was going on yeah yeah i I have one issue with the book, Ooh, and, what it, is it? and it's a it's a literary issue. issue. It's not even story. Mm -hmm. It's um so the family in this book, you know, so it goes with this family and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, their last name is uh, F A R D Y, <laughs> oh. which, which is uh, pronounced farty. <laughs> <laughs> farty. And I don't the seven year old in me. Every every time Ashley Eckstein says, and then the little farty girl ran out. <laughs> I was like, how did this get past someone? How did the oh editor not God. be like, let's let's not? Call or how did she keep a straight face when she was saying yes. that all the time? How did how do you be like? And then, I didn't even think about that because I haven't heard her say it. I need to. Yeah. I think when I read it again, I'll get the audio book so I can experience that part of it too. It's good. Um, <laughs> but that's yeah. awesome. There, there's a, there's a <laughs> sentence that stuck out where it says, "The little farty girl ran out." And I was like, oh, no. Aww. I just picture a little girl, like, <laughs> farting as she's running up. And I was like, no. That's is... great. Yeah. I was like, what is this? <laughs> that is awesome. But yeah. I, I the, only, the only gripe I had about the book, and I think it's not really that big of an issue. I think it was just me being picky. I felt like the beginning was a little slow or it went on a little too long before we got to like exciting stuff. But I, I totally understand why they have to do that. I mean, they had sure. to set up the story and set build. up where she was. And mm -hmm. I'm just a very, um, action oriented person. Like I literally never read books because they're to me, they're very slow and sure. I can't visualize some of the action. Whereas when I watch movies, it's like, boom, explosions, colors, cool people. Like there's a lot going on for me to absorb and books for me are a little flat and sure. just, I don't have that You're a mind visual person. to exactly. I don't have sure. that mind to create scenes in my head when I'm reading a book. So when I started the book, I was like, "Oh, this is great." And then as it went on, I was like, "Okay, let's get to more exciting stuff." Yeah. And it quickly <laughs> picked up the pace. Sure. But at first, I was like, "Okay, it's... this is why I don't read." But then it was right. like it got to more characters that we knew. Yes. That was the problem. Some of the characters at the beginning were brand new, and I didn't know how to picture them. I didn't know how they sounded. I just, sure. you know, I needed that like base of what to visualize them as in my head and sense. then when we got to characters we knew i was like oh boom i know that person i know exactly how they sound and how they would react to things and sure. then it got a lot better after that sure and especially like how strong that book started with you know ahsoka and rex going after darth maul and you're like oh, oh my snap. god oh, snap. and then it is getting real <laughs> and then it immediately is like and now she's hiding for a yeah. while and now the farties are here <laughs> <laughs> the farties the farties that's uh... canon yeah. That's great. <laughs> that's that is a, great. That's one of the few things in the new canon that I'm like, why did this happen? Um, have you? What have you read of the new canon? Have you caught up or? Um, I've only read, like I said, I don't read a lot. I've only right. read Dark Disciple. Oh, amazing. And that book it was amazing. Holy freaking crap! Because For real. I'm gonna do a little rant on this real quick. Do it. Let's so do it. That's why we're here. <laughs> I don't remember when this book was announced, but I remember at 
Celebration Anaheim at the mm-hmm. Delray booth, they had a huge poster, like the cover image on a giant like uh, poster thing. And I stood by it and I took a picture because Ventress's hair in the picture it's looks like just like mine. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, all oh, snap, guess who's going to be working on this costume? Right. And I actually started on it. I started on it prior to Celebration. So they must have announced it at least like a few weeks before Celebration. Um, sure. And I worked on the costume. And I didn't have it finished in time and I haven't gone back to it because I started on Sabine. But anyways, I wanted to read it because I think Ventress is one of the best developed characters in the Clone Wars show because, you know, we saw her in the micro series. That's not really canon anymore, but we got to see that part of her life. And then Clone Wars comes along and then she gets, you know, betrayed by Dooku and it gets real. And she goes through a lot, too. Yeah. Yeah. She she did so many things. And so I wanted to know more about her story. And I'm. I think Quinlan Boss is great, but I didn't oh, yeah. read the book for him. I read it for Ventress. Sure. And then I I just thought it was wonderful. So I read I read Dark Disciple and then um I also read The Perfect Weapon, which is about Bazine Natal. I think one that's of, how you say her one name. There's a few I haven't read yet. That one was pretty good. It's yeah. it's really, really interesting because they in the story, they give you so many details about her costume. So when I first saw her costume in the show, I was like, dang, she is like so high fashion and retro and edgy and I love it. And then when you read the book, they talk about, um, I'm not going to spoil anything, but they just talk about different elements of her costume and why she dresses a certain way and how she looks a certain way. And it's super interesting to know the backstory of this character. That's literally only in it for 10 seconds. Probably. Oh yeah. That's what Star Wars Um, is about. Yeah, so I really liked that. And then I also read all of the other short stories except one of them. I can't remember the one I didn't read. I read the one about Captain Ithano, which oh, was amazing. Oh, one of my favorites. There was, oh my God, the little tidbit about the clones in there. Yes. And, I mean, that lost Dooku's my mind. Dooku's treasure. Oh, I did too. Yep. I did too. I did too. I was yep. like, cause I thought I thought it was going to be kyber crystals the whole oh. time. Because I was like, oh, maybe he just had a bunch of lightsaber crystals. And, you know, by that time, they're worth a fortune. I was like, oh. I wonder what that is. And then when we find out what it is, I was like, what? Oh, it's like, snap. It's like yeah. Twilight Zone twist. <laughs> yeah, one of my friends had told me um, that I needed to read it because there was going to be something in it that I really would like. And I was like, well, it's got to be about clones because <laughs> that's me. And sure. I don't think Cad Bane is going to show up in this. Sure. Um, so I read that one. And then I read some of the other short stories, like the one about Baba Joe. And I, I don't remember. The... I read um, That one's pretty cute. I read the Constable Zuvia one and loved it. I th- I'm trying to think. I, knew I that might that may have been the one that I haven't read yet. I have it's one so left, good. and I keep forgetting to read it because um, I so have good. them on my Kindle, and I never read on my Kindle, so I need to go back and and read that last one. But those were really good, and I like that they're so short because typically I don't have the discipline and the focus to read an entire book from cover to cover and sure. with the short stories I can literally read one in like a half hour or less so um, right. I like that a lot and then I'm trying to think if I've read anything else um whenever Thrawn comes out I'm definitely oh, going to read that man. because I read the Thrawn trilogy way back in the day I oh, really yeah. don't remember Air much about Empire. it yeah so I read good. that um, but that was a while ago and now that he's back in Rebels I want to see uh, I want to read more about him and like get in touch with his character more because I think they're doing a really good job with him in Rebels so far. Sure. Uh, and everybody's on the Thrawn train except me, I feel like, because everybody's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, back in the day when we didn't have Star Wars, I was obsessed with him. And I was like, back in the day, I was in diapers. Like, <laughs> I wasn't around I time. wasn't born yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so sure. I want to get to know this character more I'm, I'm because I think excited. he's really interesting. For sure, for sure. And I love that they're, like, doing it with Timothy Zahn, who created the character. Yeah. And they're having him... <sighs> rewrite Thrawn for yeah. that's canon now. He goes, all right, you know those books you read? We want you to rewrite them, but here's the yeah. parameters. And I love they that. They kind of have to because he oh, really yeah. probably created that character. And, like, yeah, imagine sure. if somebody else wrote that book. I would I would cry for Timothy Zahn. Oh, I'd be like, be I'm awful. so sorry for the way right? they're treating you. But <laughs> so, thank goodness they had him write that. Right. And I remember – at Celebration, that's uh, that's when they debuted that he was writing it, and yeah. I lost it. I'm like, I don't even know much about this character, but I'm stoked for you and like right? everybody <laughs> else who is stoked about this because I have so many friends that are obsessed with Thrawn, and like he's the reason why they got into Star Wars. And so yeah. I was just thrilled for them 
and just Star Wars community in general because everybody was so excited about it. Um, and I wasn't expecting him to say he was writing the Thrawn book because there was that little video of Timothy Zahn. He was like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't be at Celebration with you guys. Um, I'm busy writing my new book, Thrawn. And I was like, what? <laughs> <For laughs> Not real. expecting that. I wasn't even expecting it to be a Star Wars book. So I'm looking forward to that one. But other than that, I don't read a ton. Um, so that I probably won't be reading anything until that comes out. There are, you're missing out on some good stuff. I know. Just, Maybe, uh, I think whenever I finish school, I'll read more. But right now, I just read so much for school. That makes total that, sense. Yeah, that I don't want to read in my free time because my eyes hurt from reading words. Oh, so yes. <laughs> when school is over, I think I'll be more apt to pick up a book and get to know the stories and, oh, yeah. and all that stuff. Might... Because right now, it's like I read way too much for school that I just, I don't even want to look at books. <laughs> oh, yeah. My girlfriend's the exact same way. She, yeah. On the breaks, she'll read a book, but during school, she's like, I'm not going to read because I read constantly. And yeah, that's way. what I did. I did that over summer break. They weren't Star Wars books, but I decided to read two books over summer break, and all of my friends were like, what the heck? You're actually reading? I'm like, yeah, I'd <laughs> like to do this when I'm not doing it every day. Sure. When you do read so. them, let me know because I'll tell you the best ones because I've read them all. Oh, I will. I will. <laughs> with, okay, perfect. With, with the exception of a couple short stories and a lot of the comics I haven't kept up with, but all the books. Yeah, I don't I've, read the comics either. I've read all the books. And, I read uh, the um, the C-3PO co uh, comic to, oh, to read the, about the his arm. arm. And the yeah. acid rain. <laughs> yes, yeah. that was the coolest thing to me. Agreed. I love 3PO. Me too. He, me too. Um, there, I will warn you, though, there are some books that are not good that are out that are canon <laughs> Ooh. yeah that are uh not not enjoyable Ooh. like um heir to the jedi not great not great at all is that about luke yes okay i'm not a big fan of luke so he, that's easy to yeah he cross and, off my list and this one like the way that they wrote him i get that they tried to like go inward to him and be like oh he's just a person kind of thing but they made him really really dumb Wait, doesn't he have a girlfriend in that book? He does. Like, okay, he gets I remember a girlfriend, hearing about that. And then, like, at, toward the end, he's, like, practicing using the Force, but he's doing it by using the Force to, like, eat noodles. Oh. And I was like, this is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you're telling I, me the son of Anakin Skywalker. I would Skywalker. probably eat my noodles using the Force I know, I but you're not Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's like, we could see, like, younglings doing that, sure. But this is, like post death star luke skywalker oh yeah i was like what is what is going on um aftermath yeah. aftermath uh was not good see i've heard a lot of mixed reviews about that so i might Ooh. try reading it because i have i've heard so many positive things and then i've also heard a lot of negative things so i yes. think you that might be should, one you absolutely to, should read it to judge on let my me own know. <laughs> let i me will know what you think because i've heard some good i did not particularly enjoy it but that's also because remember Last year, they did the whole Road to the Force Awakens. Yeah. And, like, none of the books tied into Episode 7. Right, <laughs> right. Like, in what way is this the road, but none of it takes place after Episode 6? I don't understand. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but Lost Stars is phenomenal. Okay, that's the one. Yeah, that's so the one I've been good. wanting to read. It's, Everybody talks about oh how good God. that one is. It's probably my second favorite of the new canon. All right, um, that's going to be the next one I read, I think. Maybe I'll will, pick that up and read it over, it. like, Thanksgiving break or something. You will love it. It's so good. And then Perfect. Lords of the Sith is probably the best one out so far. What is that one about? I don't oh, even think I've heard man. about that one. It is about Darth Vader and Palpatine and Cham Sabula. Oh. oh. It's, so, it's the best one out out of all the books, in my opinion. Well, that's awesome. It's so good. Like, Darth, cool. Vader, Darth Vader and Palpatine crash land on a planet, and they have to figure out a way to survive. And while being wow. hunted by the rebels as well on Ryloth. Oh my gosh. It is. That's like. It is so good. Clone Wars and Rebels meets yes. movies and awesomeness. So that good. sounds awesome. So good. And I highly recommend the audiobook if you can get it for that specific okay. book. Because the okay. effects that they do in it and with Vader's breathing and that's. Oh, it's, oh. So, it's one of the best audiobooks I've ever listened to. I will definitely check that one out too. So good. Um, but out Come of on. that, I don't think I've ever asked do you have a favorite Star Wars movie? Like, out of them all, anyone you're particular to? or It's got to be Empire. Gotta Empire be all the way because, yo, we got Lando. We no, got. I love Lando. We have Han Solo being smooth and adorable. And then Frozen. And I love. <laughs> I love all of the um, the different planets we get to see in Episode Five. I love Cloud I City. I love Dagobah. 
Um, so that makes me really happy. I think from like a photographer's sort of point of view, I think it's a beautiful movie. Sure. Um, there's so many scenes in that movie that you just want to screen cap and make your desktop background for oh, yeah. forever. Um, and I love, I love the acting. I just, I just think that is such a solid movie. And uh, that's the movie that I always want to show to people when they say they've never seen Star Wars. Like, right. of course, I want to show them all the movies in order. But I'm like, oh, but I really can't wait to show you this one because it is amazing. And there's really there's really not really anything that I don't like about Empire. Sure, um, I sure. enjoy I enjoy all of it. And I enjoy the costumes. I like that Leia gets some different outfits in there. Yeah. Um, and some different hairdos. But yeah, I just I love Empire Strikes Back. And then. Probably next to that, I would have to pick, um, gosh, probably The Force Awakens, honestly. Really? That was either The Force Awakens or A New Hope. Those are my top three for sure. Interesting. Um, Very interesting. Yeah. My bottom three are... Um, Uh-oh. <laughs> don't, don't, don't hate me. I don't know. I don't Should hate... I even say this? People are going to Go send me it. hate mail. Yeah. All right. Here's um, what, preface it by this. This is what I always say. I love all Star Wars. Oh, me too. I love, me too. I love all of it. I love the prequels. I love the OT. I love the sequels. I love everything. But me if too. I had to stack them in spots, I, even the bottom of the list, I still love it. It just, there are, there are holes for pegs, and that's how it goes. Yeah. So it doesn't Mine... mean you dislike them. It just means you like them. Right. A little less. Way. Yes, exactly. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. <laughs> and it's not, it's not that they're bad movies. It's just if I had to pick one movie to watch for the rest of my life, Right. I would not pick Attack of the Clones because yeah. I would get a little bored. <laughs> Two so is on the I bottom of my list. <laughs> my bottom three are um, Attack of the Clones, Return of the Jedi, and Phantom Menace. Really? Um, Six is on the I, bottom. Interesting. Yeah, and a lot of people say that, but there's something hmm. – um, to me there's a little – let me think of how to say this because I don't want to <laughs> say it in the wrong way. For sure. Um, I don't know. This is probably still going to sound weird, but That's to me, okay. there's a little lack of adventure in six. It's a little more serious and, okay. um, I don't know. I don't know why sure. I don't like it. Maybe it's, um, I don't know, honestly, but empire is the bomb Empire is the and bomb. episode three is great too. I just, I wish, uh, they could refilm it maybe. Okay. And make a bunch of the sets and do more practical effects because I feel like that kind of drags down part of the movie. Okay. Um, but I like all the characters in episode three. I think it's interesting how they, you know, created, um, you know, he they turned Anakin to the dark side. I like the way they did that. I yeah. love Obi-Wan. Oh, yes. I love all the clones. So I was just in heaven watching that for the first <laughs> time. Um, and that's actually the first movie... I think it's the first Star Wars movie I ever saw in theaters. Really? Um, I could be wrong because I could have seen Attack of the Clones and I just don't remember it. But sure. I really don't think I saw Attack of the Clones. I think I specifically and vividly remember seeing um, Revenge of the Sith in theaters because I dressed up for it and I went to the midnight premiere. Oh, really? and I was like I was like nine or ten years old. Um, so that one's very special to me. Um, but yeah, Attack of the Clones, Phantom Menace, and Return of the Jedi are a little on the bottom level for me. But I, it's not that I dislike them. It's just... Exactly. You like them. They're just at the on your top ten. They're in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that at all. Everybody's always going to have a favorite. Exactly. So. And everyone's allowed. That's when communities yeah. can get toxic is when they're like, you like prequels better than OT and whatever. You know, it's like yeah, people it's are like, allowed no, to like it. what they like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Three is actually my favorite out of all of them so far. Wow. I love three. I, uh, my thing was, I mean, I was born in 91, right? So I wasn't around for the originals, but I saw the originals mm -hmm. first. So I saw four, five, and six, and I really liked them. And then mm -hmm. one, two, and three, I've never viewed Star Wars as movies. Oh. Like ever. Like I don't look at them the way I look at any other movie because the story oh. is so much bigger and there's books and there's oh, comics yeah. and there's games. Like it's unlike anything else. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at it, like, like for instance, um, Aftermath, I don't like the way Aftermath was written, but I like the story it's telling kind of thing. Oh, yeah. So okay. With, so with Star Wars, episode three was that final peg that combined what I love with the backstory and was like the perfect, oh. this is everything brought together perfectly. 
Right. And uh, I loved, I loved, I loved what episode three was, and I love yeah. the story. I've seen, I've seen one through six well over a hundred times each. It's like when you're a kid and you would watch like a movie, and then when it was over, you just rewind it, and watch it again. That was Star yeah. Wars for me as a kid. I oh just, yeah. Always. So I have like all six movies memorized. <laughs> That's um, awesome. But three was like, this is this is it. This is the final piece, and it was so perfect. I I cry every single time I watch it. Even seen it hundreds Aww. of times. Order sixty six. I'm I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, you know when I cry when um, Obi Wan is on the boga and he and they fall into the water and uh, the boga or you know, I guess when, its name is boga. Yeah, it's a um, boga, named boga. Yeah, boga. When like it screams falls into the water and it screams and I I'm just like I can't do this I yeah, can't yeah I'm out I'm out me that yep. that and then when Kiati Mundi is what does it for me oh no dude oh my god <laughs> this is when, this when... is like this is like talking to myself because everybody <laughs> hates on Kiati Mundi so much because he's kind of an idiot but yeah, he that part that because look. he's like he's fighting he's fighting he's fighting and they then he looks the back bridge. and it's like. <laughs> It's like the life is drained out of him before they even kill him. It's like it's pure. He's fear. like, whoa, yeah. oh my god, it's just I'm gonna start crying because it's so it. sad. It's like, and the fact that they took Ugh. they took the bridge, they're winning, and he's like, come on, yeah, and turns around and yeah. just that pure fear, and then he's god. Kept, I, I have goosebumps, like I'm not doing, yeah, it. this is not good <laughs> for me. Um, so that, that scene is a lot to th- handle. That I over a hundred times I've seen it, I will cry every single time. <laughs> Aww, that and, it's, a, it's uh, an amazing part. Yeah, and like I've always been a Jedi. That's my thing. Like even growing up as a kid, it's what I always wanted to be. Like, I I morphed who I am as a man based off of what I saw in Qui Gon Jinn. Like, oh my god, yeah. that's awesome. I I actively try to be more like that character in real life, and wow, so to see like Jedi being killed. <laughs> Just did not, it doesn't, I don't do it well. doesn't sit well. <laughs> yeah. I don't handle it like a man like I should. <laughs> and um, It's a lot to handle. It is. And and that, and Obi-Wan's, you know, you were my brother, Anakin, I loved you, tears. Mm-hmm. Just can't, yeah. can't do it. So three, yeah. three gets the emotional rise out of me, and I, oh boy, I don't. The music is so strong in that oh movie, too. Oh my god, it so is. It's, so, it's just, amazing. Oh, three. Three's my favorite movie of all time, like out of anything ever. Episode three of Star Wars is just Wow. Ooh. Like ever any movie ever. Any movie ever. Star Wars wow. is top of my list and that's my favorite Star Wars movie. That um, one was at the top of my list for a long time. And sure. then the more I watched uh, the original trilogy, I was like, Man, I really do like Empire a lot. Empire and so is phenomenal. That one became my favorite. But actually, uh, three and five were like my favorites. But then Gosh, Force Awakens came out, and I was like, "Dang, I really dig this." Right, <laughs> We're gonna have to move the order around. That's I did the same thing. That's uh, uh, with that. I'm like, new movies come out. All right, where does it fit? Okay, yeah. I'm do interest. Okay, here. Like, I love in the in the OT. I actually like six the best because of all the aliens. Wow. Oh yeah. I'm See, that's kind of why I fan. like four because right. of the most Eisley Cantina. That is my jam. That's like. My favorite scene in all of Star Wars, of all the movies, is um, the most Eisley Cantina scene really? in A New Hope because of, yep, every every movie. That's, that's my awesome. favorite um, because I love all the aliens and Panda Baba and Dr. Evazan, their oh, little yes. riff there <laughs> is my favorite. And then, he you know, you meet like Han you. Solo. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it, it's like the best. It's so It's good. the best scene um, and the best setting. And yeah, I love, um, I love the canteen. I collect different cantina things i don't go nutso and try to collect everything but i just bought um at disney last week and i found a little plate and it had cantina artwork on it and oh, so awesome. i put my jewelry in it um at the end of the day now and it just it's the cutest thing ever that's um awesome. so yeah cantina is my my jam for a, the alien reason i'm a Jabba's palace guy I, love, I can see it i love i love actually i love aliens aliens are kind of like my thing yeah uh, i have a i have a shelf in my room that has close to 30 now figures you know wow. i collect the three and three quarter inch they're all aliens that's awesome i just love the design i love like how much thought went into it they're so cool like i'm a big soliston fan like i love oh that's cool i love aliens aliens are just the coolest thing ever i like aliens too and i also like droids i think oh, um like protocol droids specifically i think it's interesting how they're so human-like Sure. But they're droids and they're <laughs> not humans, and so I I've been collecting the little vintage three and three quarter action figures, and I've I've only have a few right now because I literally just started collecting them. But I have um 
I have RA7 from the Death Star, oh, and I have um, E3PO. Oh, um, right. So they're just, they're so cute. And then I have um, Ponda Baba, because right he's an alien. And I have just the generic Ithorian, the vintage Ithorian as well, because aliens. Yeah. Um, and like <laughs> we said earlier, aliens. the micro series kind of gave them more of a, of a story. Yeah, we know they can, like, cause earthquakes with their throat. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty Who, who pretty knew Mama Madon could do that? Yeah. <laughs> <I didn't. laughs> um, so Rogue One is coming out. Yeah. We had a lot of Rogue One news come up recently. Yeah. We had uh, and... posters. We had another trailer. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, how, how where where are you at in your hype level? Are you excited? so? I'm gonna I'm gonna lay it out. I'm gonna be honest. Let's do it's, it. It's a good thing though. It's a good thing. Of so this um, is a safe zone. <laughs> yeah. At first. At first. I. I was excited. Uh But I wasn't on the same level of excitement for The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens literally exploded my mind (laughs) into a billion pieces as soon as I saw. It's in the the saga. So, understandable. Yep. It, like, exploded my brain into a billion pieces when I saw the first trailer. And I got super excited. And then the teaser and then the trailer, all that stuff stoked me up. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so for Rogue One, I... I saw the first few teasers and stuff and I was like, man, this is amazing. And that one teaser that had the Imperial alarm gave me chills. I literally watched that like a hundred times. I'm not kidding. Um, Just because the music in that was so strong and I was so excited about it. But after that, I felt like the trailers kind of lacked. And for me, they didn't get me excited and I didn't think they were cinematically, uh, balanced and i don't know there, i had an issue with them and i couldn't my, put my finger on it and i think it may have just been the editing sure um but i love i love all the posters that have been released they're all gorgeous oh yeah i love the way they're going with that because i particularly was not a big fan of the episode seven uh poster Me the neither. final one Me neither. it was just like it looked too I don't, digitally kind of not arts i don't know it's hard yeah. to explain I'm just so used to Drew Struzan's posters and they're just so artfully done and not that the person who made this isn't an artist, but to me, I felt like it was, I just, I just felt like it was a little thrown together in Photoshop and the Rogue One posters are looking great. Yeah. Yeah, They're very Struzan-y and, um, I don't know. There's just something about him that I really like. So I'm excited for this movie. Now the, the recent trailer that came out, like really got me excited and I saw X wings and I was like, Oh boy, here we go. Oh yes. Um, so I'm excited about it. Um, but I'm really excited to see new planets. That's like one of my favorite things to see. That was what I really liked about the force awakens was we got to see a lot of new planets and now like Scarif, I'm so stoked about it because right. I love the beach and I love tropical environments. Like I live in Florida, you know, yeah. you live in Florida too, yeah. you know how it is. Um, and I just, I'm used to that and I really like it. And we haven't really gotten to see that in a live action Star Wars movie. It's true. So I'm stoked for the scare of troopers. Can't wait to see them like kicking butt. Um, and I think it'll be neat to see that kind of environment because we've seen snow, we've seen swamp, we've seen a lot of different things, we've seen a lot of deserts. Yeah. <laughs> um, but when they first released images of Scarif, I was like, man, this is really, really cool. Yeah. It's like, it's like Star Wars came to Florida. Exactly. Um, the Florida so, garrison like claps and cheers. <laughs> exactly. So I was really excited about that. Um, and the recent trailer kind of tied together the story and now we get to know more about Jin's backstory and her yeah. dad and it gave a lot more story movement in the trailer whereas I felt like the first few were just it was more of a, a visual cool factor like sure. oh this looks cool oh this sounds cool but I didn't know enough about the characters to grab onto it and then the recent one was like you know talking about Jin's dad and, and then you get to see Krennic talking yeah. to Vader and I was like alright here we go like I'm ready <laughs> So now I'm fully on board. At first I was like, I don't know. This is this is just not clicking with me. Sure. Uh, but they really knocked it out of the park with the last trailer. So that's what hooked me. I am I am beside myself with excitement for this one. It's I coming was, so soon, too. Oh I just realized God. today, like... It's like 57 are... days or something. Not that anybody's counting. I mean, not that we're counting um, or anything. It's a couple hours, no. but it's whatever. <laughs> if yeah. you're into that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like coming so soon. Yes. And and it's always like in the back of my head, but then I don't realize how quickly the days are going by. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm excited. See, I, I, I love I this. I love the, like I said, with the incorporation, you know, that everything's tied together now. 
So we get Saw Gerrera on screen as a person. Yeah. It's mind-blowing. Like, someone from yeah. the Clone Wars is in a movie. Like, and that what? is such a... Huge. Not that he was a popular character to, to have uh, put in a movie, but I feel like it's almost a fan service because um, people who watch the Clone Wars and Rebels and things like that, they want these characters to be involved in the larger universe of the yeah. movies. So when they announced that, I was like, oh my gosh, this brings together so many possibilities. Like, they could bring in Cad Bane into a movie. Right? Like, oh my gosh. Right? Um, I don't know if they'd ever do that, but you it's neat to know that they're <laughs> open to doing that. And exactly because they've done the opposite, they've taken you know movie characters and put it in Clone Wars, and we see yeah, that all the time for sure. or Rebels. But just to see it the other way around is like, oh my gosh, this is one universe, a, and all the characters are the same, deal. even though they might look different in different formats. Yeah, like what what it what that move symbolizes is so huge. You know, yeah. it's like the the it's it's connected. The mediums are now connected. Like, I, I mean. I've seen this. I've seen all the Rogue One trailers hundreds of times. I mean, I just <laughs> like earlier today. I'm not kidding. I watched that last like maybe 15 times today. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and I dissect every frame. And yeah, in the scene with the X-wing, it flies up and then there's a quick explosion and you see the fleet behind them. Mm -hmm. um, there's an old Republic Chills. cruiser there in the corner, oh. and it's the exact ships that Leia got for the rebellion in Rebels. Oh my gosh! Explosion of the mind, mind like, blown. What? And this is oh, this is real amazing. life for us now. You know, <laughs> that's why. Yeah. I, that's why I've read all the books because I'm like they're gonna reference something like, right? Like Bloodline. Bloodline is the Leia novel. And yeah. Bloodline. The book is good. It's good. It's not bad at all. But there are things in Bloodline that wrecked all of my theories about Ray, and that put together mm. a timeline for Episode Seven and like like. I wanted Rey to be Luke's daughter really bad, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. having read Bloodline, that's not possible anymore. <gasps> oh. Because Bloodline takes place five years before Episode Seven, and Luke and Kylo Ren, or Ben Solo, are still traveling the galaxy training. So, mm. like, let that set in. Kylo Ren's fall happened within five years of Episode wow. Seven, so it's new. He jumped off the deep end real fast. Yes, and then finding out there's there's something in it. I uh, won't spoil it, but it's called the napkin incident. Um, oh, I I know about that yes. because um, one of my friends had read it and she was telling me about it, and she told me about that because, like I said, I don't read a lot, and I was like, hey, sure. can you just like snake me some info <laughs> about this book so I'll be Cliff in notes. on the conversation when so people talk about it? <laughs> mm -hmm. And she told me about that, and I was like, what? So I need to yes. read the whole book, but I've heard it's just super political, and that's not really it's my jam. Very, very political. So like Leia, I'm not Leia's, sure. You know, a political yeah. figure. Um, but what's yeah. crazy about that is, the napkin incident is in Bloodline. Apparently, according to Pablo Hidalgo on Twitter, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that specific event, the napkin incident, was Ryan Johnson's idea, and he said to put oh. this in the canon book. That's gonna <gasps> tell some stuff. So like oh, the connectivity so that's gonna, like, we're turn dealing into with, something. yeah. Oh my gosh! Like Leia in Episode Eight might be like, oh well, this is nothing like the napkin incident, and then we'll just lose our minds. <laughs> oh man! So, yeah, that's that's the best part about reading the books is you pick up on all those things, and it's funny because whenever I was in London for Celebration and they announced the Thrawn book and Thrawns and Rebels. Um, I was in the big auditorium for the rebel screening and I was sitting with some friends and then my mom was in there as well, but she was sitting a section over with one of her friends. So we weren't together when Thrawn was debuted. Oh, um, God. and then afterwards she was like, why was everybody so excited about that guy? Like, who is he? And I was like, <laughs> Oh girl, let me tell you. Cause she hasn't, <laughs> she hasn't read those books. Yeah. And I was like, I don't have all the information to tell you cause I don't know everything about him, but I gave her the basics and I was like, this is why he's awesome. And this is why everybody's excited. And then she was like, Oh, he's kind so of a deal. <laughs> yeah. Then she was like, well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Why everybody literally freaked out and everybody else's heart stopped. Yes. So yeah, it but makes sense. How, but it was funny. How was Celebration London? It was really great. And I liked it because it was a much smaller scale uh, or a smaller venue as That's what I've heard. The, other, the other celebrations, which was great because uh, you didn't get exhausted running from panel to panel um, because it was <laughs> all point. right there. It was nice and tight. And they had the exhibit hall broken up into two separate rooms that were across 
the main hall from each other, which was nice because sometimes I get a little confused when I'm in the big exhibit hall and I'm like, Oh, I can't remember where this booth was. It's like way in the back, but it sure. takes forever to get there or I'll lose where I am. And since they had the exhibit hall broken up into two like medium sized room, it made everything a lot more manageable and the crowds were a lot better because they were separated. Um, there was a good traffic flow through there. So people were, uh, not really like crossing through the aisles like crazy. Sure. Um, it was great. I do have to say though, this, I think this was part of me not being so hyped about rogue one was that panel for me personally was a giant letdown because I had gone to the force awakens panel in celebration Anaheim. Did you see Harrison Ford? No. Oh, okay. That was at San Diego, right? That was at San okay, Diego. That I was. Mi- I miss those. Can you imagine? <laughs> okay, we'll go to that in a second. Yeah. I need to talk about my reaction to that. Yes. But um, uh, for Anaheim, that's when they debuted the trailer with Chewie We're Home. Yes. And since Han Solo is my boy, I, I bawled my eyes out. Yeah. Um, and I just, I, you know, goosebumps and tears and everything happened all at once. And it was amazing. And I was expecting that for Rogue One. Well... When we, I waited overnight for that panel. I slept on the floor of the Q hall right. for the panel, just as I did for episode seven. I was like, oh, guys, I was telling all my friends, oh, this is going to be so worth it. We're all going to be so excited tomorrow when we go to this panel. We're going to be glad <laughs> that we slept on the floor overnight. And they were like, sure, Savannah, uh, this better be great. Right. And then it happened. And the first time they played the little sizzle reel for us, they were having technical issues. And it just kind of oh, messed no. up with the with the suspense and the excitement. There was a technical issue and they had to stop it and then they played it later and then um Gwendolyn was a fantastic host and I was excited that she was there but she was a little too scripted and she was reading Uh. off her cue cards way too much and it was just it was a little forced and then one of the actors and I can't remember which one it was I know exactly what you're about to say he (laughs) spoiled something yes we won't say Um, what it is because I'm trying to forget it but I yep, know just not, what you mean. <laughs> I watched the about it. I watched the live stream and I was like, "No." We were all looking at each other like, "Holy crap! Did that just happen?" I can't imagine. Um, so that was a little cricket chirp inducing in the room. We were like, I mean, uh, kind "What?" Of. It's, like, it's, it's like if Kyla Ren was like, "Yeah," and then you know, my dad over there. Oh God. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when I stabbed my dad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. We're like, what? Yeah. So. Yeah, just there were a lot of little things that kind of made the room um, and the energy a little. Yeah, just, just all the little air light. gets sucked out. Right. Yeah, it was a little <laughs> with light. One, and one I word. think. <laughs> I don't really know a lot about the culture, like the European culture, but I think sure. um, from what I noticed in other panels, mm-hmm. um, they don't get as excited about things as we do in America. Yes, that's a fact. Um, Okay, so, yeah, all right, I guess my observations are right then. But, yes. yeah, they were just a little quiet, and I was like, huh, this is, this <laughs> is a, little, a little odd. Why, why, why aren't people Anaheim? freaking out and pooping their pants? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? So, um, yeah, it was, Celebration was great, but that one aspect of it for me was just a little well, dry. I, I, I was imagine like, eh, not having yeah. the surrounding hype, literally, and – that spoiler. I can't. Yeah. I can't. Kinda, imagine, yeah. Like you said, it sucked the air out of the yeah. room. It was like, oop. You like, know, like what? in cartoons when like they, like a comedian standing up there and the joke doesn't hit, you hear like glass break and a baby crying. Yes. Like, that's, yes. How I, that's how I pictured that's that panel. Pretty much how it was. I can't. Um, I, I still, yeah. I actively am like trying to be like, I didn't hear that. I don't know. It's, I, I totally yeah. don't think about it every day because I'm really excited to see the character he's talking about. And no, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can't. But, Oh. The the Rebels panel at Celebration was the best panel I have ever attended in my life really? for anything. Um, Sam Witwer is amazing. I love. I want to and meet that man so bad. I just want to be his best friend. Right? He knows um, so much and about Star Wars. He does, and he's just such a nerd like we are, and yeah. and it's amazing. And he knows so much, and and Tia is great. And they talked a lot about their characters, and you know, Dave talked a lot about the show and where it's going, and so. I really enjoyed that panel. Um, but before I forget about it, so yeah, Harrison Ford was at San Diego Comic Con last year and yes. they they didn't live stream that panel, but people were live tweeting it. So I was on Twitter refreshing every five seconds, sure. watching, you know, the tweets come in about it and what was happening and people posting pictures and people posting videos. And I was on Skype with two of my good friends, um, Grace and Lily, and I was talking to them and Harrison Ford came out on stage. I literally started 
bawling. There's photographic <laughs> evidence of this because they screenshotted their Skype window. And I, I just had this overwhelming realization that he was coming back to Star Wars and I was going to get to see Han Solo again. Oh, and yes. it was... It was like the greatest moment of my life. And I was on the opposite coast of the United States from this man. Like sure. I was not even in the same room as him, regardless of the same state. Like I was yeah. in Florida, he's in California. And that moment for me was like amazing. And I was like, Oh my God, this is actually happening. Like this movie is going to come out and we're going to get to watch it. And he's going to be in it. And then he died in the movie and oh, I cried even man. more. And yes. I, and people asked me right after the movie was over and like the next couple of days, they were like, so what did you think? Like, how does it compare to the other Star Wars movies for you? And I was like, um, I kind of hate it right now. And I honestly can't answer that question what? because I'm super bitter about him dying. And mm -hmm. I screamed in the theater and everybody looked at me like I was crazy. And then I cried for three days and I just can't <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> that's, so, that's so funny that, to hear that you had like a similar reaction as well to Seven. It left a bad taste in my mouth for a while, but Did then I? I watched it. I literally saw it ten times in the theaters, I saw it now. and I would just <laughs> I would just close my eyes when that part happened. I literally would close my eyes every single time because I was like, I can't deal with it. It's too fresh. It hurts too much. I can watch it now, sure, because uh, I've mourned for almost a year. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it still yeah. hurts. But I can manage it's it. Still hurts, and I'm about to write a paper for my film class about. Um, a scene in any movie of my choice that was edited well and that I liked uh, the editing and I'm actually choosing that scene because oh, I thought man. the lighting was amazing and the suspense and all that was great as much as I hate it well, so I'm about to have to, to watch yourself. it on repeat like 10 times to write this paper oh. Oh, so it's that's, gonna be a, an that's, emotional day that's but very, it's okay <laughs> it's very masochistic of you <laughs> yeah I'm excited and also not excited at the same time because I have to watch it so many times but yeah anyways yeah. it <laughs> Left a bad taste in my mouth for a little while, and then I got over it, and now I'm in love with the movie. I, I, I am the same. I saw it, because remember they had, like, Thursday night showings. Oh, yeah. And they had, a, like, a 6 o'clock was the big one, or 7 o'clock, somewhere. Mm -hmm. It was, oh, 7. 7 o'clock Thursday. That's when Thursday. I saw it. And so mm -hmm. I saw it then, and then I saw it again at 11 o'clock. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. So what I did was, I, I remember... I'm like dissecting it, you know, it's so weird to see new Star Wars after a mm -hmm. decade, you know, because I'm mm -hmm. like, I know so much about Star Wars. So to see something that's completely new and that was, I've read all these books that take place after episode six, and now I'm mm -hmm. like, I know what happened, but now you're going to tell me what really happened was a weird right. mind thing. So yeah. I walked out of it and people the same like, what do you think of it? I was like, I, I didn't like it. I don't know. <laughs> I, was like, I, I was like, I don't, I, I don't like it. And then, uh, and then I watched it again and I liked it much better, but I, yeah. I still, I don't, it's like in Game of Thrones, like I don't like that my favorite character died, but it's still what happened. So I need to get over it kind of thing. Right. Um, and Han We have to Solo, put on our big girl panties. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, I, Han Solo is my favorite character in the OT as well. He's mm -hmm. just the best. And I don't mind that Han Solo was killed. I don't mind that he was killed by the villain. I mind that Han Solo was killed by his son. Yeah. Oh. And that's still like, it still like really upsets me sometimes. Just, I was like, you're telling me Han Solo. The yeah, Han Solo. The real his, one. <laughs> his son is having a fit and kills him just because. Like Anakin's. And the way he like, like touches his face yeah. before he falls. Oh God. It's. Uh, it's it rough hurts so much it's rough so i can't i it was like I don't, I don't want my hero to be like oh how do, how did the great han solo get killed well his son was having a bad day so yeah it's things like, happen if, <laughs> if kylo ren gets redeemed i'm out i'm gonna have some trouble yeah there's some real problems with some people <laughs> like, uh, no re no redemption he needs to go plain and simple yeah um yeah that scene was tough and it was just yeah i agree it was tough because his son did it and now it's just sad because when we see episode eight, we're going to see everybody again except him. I and if they do, ugh. if they do flashbacks or anything, I'm, I'm leaving and I'm going to cry in the bathroom oh, yeah. for an hour have, and, and then you, try seeing the movie again. Have you rewatched any of the OT since seeing seven? Yes. Yeah. I've watched, I've watched all of it several times. Ditto. It's uh, it's kind of hard a little. 
It is. Seeing it is. Han, and like smiling and be like, oh, you know, being all sassy and whatnot. Uh, and it'd be like, I, yeah, I know how this ends. <laughs> and seeing um, seeing Leia's interaction with him and seeing how much she loves him. Oh, yeah. And then knowing that they don't she, end up together. Yeah. And like she just got a goodbye hug and that was it. And then it was like, peace out. I'm never going to see you again. Like, oh, why did it? Why? Why? Uh, why? Whose idea was her? this? <laughs> Like, they didn't even get a kiss. I was like, they just hugged. Yeah, it's, oh, I can't. It Star hurts. Wars, it, it, it's not okay. It's not, not no. okay. No. <laughs> Star Wars is the reason why I have emotional panic attacks oh, and sure. sadness. <laughs> me, I've got, like, Star Wars is cathartic for me. <laughs> I'm like, like I, I'm not emotional at all in real life. I never cry. But you put me into a movie, <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> Game over. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. So I need to I was feel. reading. I was reading through my old blog a couple days ago, and I, I literally blogged the stupidest things because I was, <laughs> was young it, and whatever. Was it something panda? Yes. Oh, yes, I, have, yes, I have a story yes. about that when you're done. <laughs> oh boy. Well, I was like just skimming through some old posts, and I did a post about the day that it was announced that Clone Wars would be canceled, and then that day oh, flashed no. back in my head, and I remembered. I remember calling my best friend and I, I literally said to her, I don't know what to do with my life now. <laughs> like that's the importance that that show had on me was like, I don't know what to do with my life now. And I blogged about it and it was, it was so stupid. Like hey, looking amazing. back on it, it was so dumb, that's amazing. but it was, it was great that I, that I did write that down so I can go back and reference it. And that's actually why I kept that blog up. I would delete it because a lot of the stuff is embarrassing to me now, sure. but I kept it up so I could look back at it and be like, Oh, when I was 13, I wrote this thing about Cad Bane or whatever, you know, and just like oh, yes. silly things that I was into, but yeah, it, star Wars is like, emotionally telling and it will be forever it is i so i remember this is oh boy years ago like before i knew you before i was in the 501st or rebel legion before in, like i'm talking years ago maybe <laughs> maybe around the time you like just started perhaps okay um, i remember i was new to the internet and i'm just looking for any and all star wars like i found you know yellowbox.com where they teach you to make lightsabers out of sink tubes and, like, oh yeah really into that there was that um MTV show that was about kids that are embarrassed of their parents. Oh my god. And one kid's dad dressed up like a Jedi, like Rebel Legion quality, and like walked oh. around in it, and his son was embarrassed. And I was like, that sounds like the coolest relative ever. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. His name was like Kinchar Bamin or something like that. He had a Jedi name, and I'm like, that's oh. the coolest thing ever. But the show's making yeah. it out to be like, oh, he's so embarrassing. He's so, super nerdy, and I don't want to be around him. Exactly. So somewhere along the line, I came across your blog. Oh, my God. Because I remember something. It was your Jedi costume that you had. Yeah. And you did a lot of photography and stuff. And I was like, oh, what is this? Interesting. There's a girl that likes Star Wars. That's cool. And then, like, yeah. went down, like, Star Wars outlet, and it was cool. So it's so strange that, like, I found you on the internet beforehand, knowing you were any of this. That's crazy. You know? Because Star Wars. Like, Star Wars just... You yeah. put the signal out and I found it. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Uh, sometimes my friends will text me now and they'll be like, I just Googled the most random thing and I saw a picture of you pop up and I'm like, it's probably about, it's probably linking to my old blog. Like one of my friends was looking up reference pictures uh, to paint a 501st helmet and he's like, I just saw the first 10 images that popped up on Google images were of you. And I'm like, okay, I was probably <laughs> yes. 12 years old. Like, <laughs> Just ignore it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So you, to segue not so gracefully, uh, you're friends with Ashley Eckstein. How did that yeah. come about? I mean, you know oh Ahsoka. God, this is, That's kind of cool. <laughs> this is the craziest story to me because it's such a normal thing. It's not like anything. It's not like I have known her my whole life. I went right. to Star Wars weekends. Um, like I've, I had gone to Star Wars weekends every year since it started um, because I live near Disney and I just – Grew up near the parks, and that's what we did for Convenience, fun. Convenience, yeah. Yeah, so anyways, we went to Star Wars Weekends a lot, and then I think it was in 2010, I wanted to meet her and get her autograph and say hi to her because I thought she was very sweet, and I was excited that there was a new girl involved in Star Wars. Even if I wasn't crazy about her character, I was just excited that she was involved. And sure. I dressed up in my Jedi costume, waited all night to meet her, met her, and she gave me a sticker for her universe because her universe was being launched like the next month or two it was going to be launched online sure um so i got involved with that and i was like wow this is so cool I looked it up online 
And then the the forum that I was on, um, where all the girls would talk about Star Wars, sure. we talked about her universe. And so when the company launched, we were buying the clothes and we were stoked about it. Anyways. Fast forward a year later to 2011, I see Ashley again at Star Wars Weekends, and she remembered my name, and I was like, oh, my what? God, a famous person knows me. Like, yeah. I told everybody, <laughs> this celebrity knows my name, and now I, now I know that she literally remembers every single person's name that she's ever met in her <laughs> life, so I'm not special at all. I, um, I have a fo- I, don't feel bad. I have a folder saved on my email for any celebrity that likes my tweet. I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> I should do that because I screenshot them sometimes. I get excited and then I'm like, I'm such a dork. Like, why am I doing this? I'm with you. Um, I'm with you. (laughs) I need to do that. So then, um, yeah, so I saw her at Star Wars Weekends again, updated her about, you know, how much I love the Clone Wars and things like that. And then she did a signing. I think it was the very next year. And she signed right before Star Wars Weekends. She was signing her universe merchandise at the Hollywood Studios. Um just for a random meet the fan kind of a day. Not a st- It wasn't on Star Wars weekends. Sure. Um, and she asked me, she's like, Savannah, what are you going to school for? Like, what do you, what do you want to go to school for? Cause I don't think I had started college yet at that point. Right. And I was like, well, I really want to be a photographer and I think I want to pursue a degree in that. And I ended up minoring in that instead of majoring in it. But, sure. um, she was like, Oh, that's really awesome. And so my mom was with me and she very jokingly said, Oh yeah, Ashley, if you ever need a photographer, you know who to call. And I, you know, laughed it off. Ha ha mom, you're so funny. And then Ashley was like, actually I need somebody next week to take pictures of the, her universe booth at star Wars weekends. And I would love for you to do that. And I was like, I'm thinking, what the heck you (laughs) haven't even seen any of my images and you want me to do this without like, without really knowing me, honestly. Yeah. And so I was like, "Uh, heck yeah, I'm down. Like, yeah, I'd love to do that. And she featured the images on her blog. So I got to go to Star Wars Weekends a day early. And I shot the images on a Thursday. You know, we got to be backstage with her and talk to her. And I took the pictures of the booth. Because I think that was um, the first time they actually gave her, like, a store area. And not just, like, one rack of clothing. Sure. Um, They gave her, like, a little boutique kind of area. So I took pictures of it. Uh, she put them on her blog, and she also interviewed me for her YouTube channel. So if you go to, like, the Her Universe YouTube channel and scroll what? way down to the bottom, you can see little baby Savannah being a weirdo <laughs> talking about photography. Yes. Um, and that was just really cool to me because I was like, oh, my gosh, she thinks I'm cool. And, <laughs> oh, my goodness, I'm on her YouTube channel. Yeah, so, anyways, yeah, I just I just kept seeing her every year at Star Wars Weekends, and that's where we connected, and she remembered me, and we would catch up. And then um, – a few times after that, she needed a photographer for different things. And most recently, back in May, she needed somebody to take pictures of her sister during her um, bridal gown fitting. She was trying on um, mm. wedding dresses. Sure. And Disney wanted to do, Disney Style wanted to do an article about it because she was having a Disney wedding and she was going to wear a Disney inspired wedding dress. And Ashley was like, Hey, I need a photographer because um, this article is going to be written and we need pictures. And so, I went and did that, and then, um, you know, anytime Ashley's in town doing a signing or anything, I I always go to see her just because she's such an amazing person, and I've heard a few people say that she seems very fake, and I just have to say, I have seen Ashley in, like, real-life situations, like, at her house with no makeup on, like, getting right. ready to leave <laughs> for the day, and she's just such a genuine, genuinely nice person all the time. Like, she is the person you see out in public at signings or at conventions is the same person when she's just chilling. Like she is amazing and her family is amazing. And David, her husband is incredible. And I really cannot say enough great things about them because, um, actually recently she was signing the Ahsoka book at a library here in Orlando. And I didn't get to go to that one. I went to another one in Orlando and then I ended up going to one in Tampa. But anyways, She started the book signing at like, uh, I think six or seven in Orlando Mm -hmm. and she was only supposed to sign for a couple hours. She was there until like 1130 at night signing because she wanted to meet every single fan that was there to see her. And she just appreciates all her fans so much. Um, and even celebration London, she flew all the way to London for one day of Ahsoka stuff. She did the Ahsoka panel 
She wanted to meet her fans at the Little Ahsoka Lives meetup, and then she had to leave to get back in time for an event she had at home or something. Um, and she just did that for her fans. Like, she didn't have to do that and be jet-lagged and fly across the world, but right. she did that because she literally loves her fans so much and wanted to, like, give back to the community. So, you know, we're not, like, BFFs. Like, people people think I talk to <laughs> Ashley Eckstein every day, and I'm like, no. <laughs> You're like, I... I texted her right before this podcast. I'm going to text her afterwards to see what she ate. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, I talk to her on occasion, or I'll check in with her every every now and then. Sure. Um, or update her on something happening in my life but it's not like I talk to her all the time but when we do get to talk it's like it's just the best because she's just so interested in what I'm doing and she's like that with everybody she wants to know who are you and you know what are you interested in and what do you want to do and she's just a very genuinely amazing person and I just think she is the reason why I really embraced my Star Wars fandom sure and and a lot of people men and women now I think she has helped them embrace what they love and her universe has done so much for the fangirl community and, oh, yeah. and girls being able to like express themselves through clothing and accessories and just being comfortable saying, yeah, I'm a star Wars fan and I'm a girl. And it's just so normal now. Like yeah, I great. have never really had anybody recently say to me, Oh wait, you love star Wars and you're a girl. Like that used to happen to me a lot Sure. when I was first getting into it. And now it's just such an accepted thing. And it's amazing. Cause I feel like I don't have to prove myself anymore. Exactly. Um, when exactly. I was first getting into this, I felt like I constantly had to be up to date on my trivia because some fan was going to try to outsmart me and I had to like prove myself. And now I'm just like, no, I can be who I am and it's okay. And right. I think she really had a lot to do with that because she wants everybody to be accepted and be proud of like being a Star Wars fan. And it just makes me so happy that she was able to do that. And then her character turned into like a national phenomenon basically. Yeah. I mean, her book just like sold out or whatever. So that's incredible. It's, it's, it's just amazing. she's the best i could literally talk about her for two hours as well because she's amazing <laughs> that's so cool i i haven't met her yet she's like on top of us i'd love to meet her she's like a dream guest you haven't met her i haven't i haven't how have you not met her i know and i'm pretty i'm pretty in <laughs> no she's oh, she's one of those we people need to make this I'm... happen if you can let her know, like i'm gonna geek out on her because she's amazing but <laughs> I, I do love the fact that like women in star wars for me like it is a big thing now you know to have women included in things and i think it's great but i always loved how the women in star wars are strong like i attribute yeah. that to a lot of guys nowadays like they're really big into like the damsel in distress like that's what Ugh. they're attracted to i've Gross. even as a kid i've just <laughs> never been into that I me mean, like yeah. like my crush my entire life is natalie portman always <laughs> and forever it will be padme like yeah i love the fact that you know, they're like, Anakin, you need to just stay there and protect her. She goes, well, I'm going to go save Obi-Wan, so you're going to have to come with me. Right. Like, I love right. strong women. They're the, they're the best. And Star Wars has always been on the forefront of that with Princess Leia. Like, she's yeah. a princess who She just grabbed that blaster. Right she away. Shot, and she was like, dude, get in the garbage chute because exactly. I'm ready to go. <laughs> exactly. Like, I love that. But she's a princess, you know? And yeah. then Rey. Rey is just awesome she you know? is on so many like, levels of awesome i so can't good. even handle it <laughs> and it's like we have in the real world we have ashley eckstein you know yeah. who like girls didn't even have girl star wars shirts readily available yeah like, because of her universe like she's at the forefront of that you know it's just and it's even so daisy cool. ridley i mean i know she's taken a break from social media which is a bummer but it is when she was on instagram she posted so many things that that i like needed to hear. And one day she posted something about um, something so simple as talking about having acne. And I was yes, like, Oh my I God, this that. is so rare because so many celebrities, male and female don't talk about imperfections. They try to make it look like their lives are perfect and they look yes. perfect in their, but they're really just Photoshopped and they have a lot of makeup on. Yeah, and I just loved how honest. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. I just love how honest she was yeah. about her life. And she'd be like, yep, I work out on Fridays and I eat, cheeseburgers on Saturdays like, yes you know phenomenal. and that's that's okay and that's one thing I I really like about Daisy Ridley and Ashley is is very much like that too she's just you know this is me and take me for what I am I'm not going to pretend to be anything that I'm not um so it's refreshing to see female characters that are like that and also the people that are portraying them are just as amazing. Agreed. And I'm I can't wait to see more of Felicity Jones. I don't really oh, know a man. lot about her. I've never seen any movies with her in it. She's um, very good. 
I think whenever she gets the reaction of everybody going nuts over Jin, um, I think she'll be an interesting person to keep an eye on and just see, you know, who she is outside of the Star Wars community, who yeah. she is like as a normal person, basically. For sure, for sure. It's it's so cool. Star Wars is the best. <laughs> yeah, for, it is for great. For literally every reason, even like on social issues, like it's just the best. Yeah, I, yeah. I absolutely love that. Um, so on on a, a, a segue sort of, out of it because i've taken up a lot of your time oh um, you're fine <laughs> you have the dorky diva i do dorky diva is you what what is that what do you do so the dorky diva is the grown-up version of my old panda website <laughs> oh, <right on. laughs> because uh <laughs> my old blog was a, a success and people enjoyed it but then i realized that it was very like immature and teenagery and I was like all right I need to transition out of this into something that's a little more grown up you can um, feel the angst on the web page <laughs> yeah exactly I was like I need to um sort of create something new and and uh yeah. anyway so I started the dorky diva I started a new blog and my brother actually came up with a name because I'm horrible at naming things I, I didn't <laughs> even name my old blog and I was like Chase uh I need help like I need help with a name and I Want it to be about Star Wars, but I also want it to just be about me and my nerdy interests um, and what I like to do and who I am as a person. And so we were, were coming up with cute little taglines and names, and he came up with the dorky diva. And I was like, well, that's kind of perfect because I am a total dork, and I am also a diva sometimes. Sure. And I get on people's nerves because I'm a <laughs> diva sometimes. But it just worked out. So I started the blog, and I... I don't get to update it as much as I would like to because school, school. and life is very time consuming, but it's a great outlet for me to talk about things um, that are happening in my life or things that I want to share with people. Like I did a series of posts over the summer about um, how to create a costume. Yes. which were And great. I, I love, uh, I love cosplay and I wish I had time and funds to do it all the time because I really enjoy it. Um, but yeah. a lot of people come to me with questions about how I create certain things or paint certain things. And I was like, well, let me just do a series on this and I'll answer everybody's questions at once. Sure. And so I did that and I really enjoyed doing that. And then I also talk about, um, real life stuff. I mean, honestly, I've talked about everything from like a horrible breakup to, um, just feeling lonely or not making friends. Like I, I talk about everything, but I, I like to relate it back to star Wars because sure. as much as I love the movies in star Wars, it's, it's like the fan community that really keeps me going and the inspiration of characters and just, it's such a loving atmosphere. Um, the star Wars fan community is great. Oh, yeah. And so I like to connect my real life things to um to star wars because that's really what keeps me positive and and motivated to to do what i love to do yeah. so i talk about that on there as well um and then i like to just post about like nerdy star wars outfits that i put together i kind of just cover all the bases i like to feature other fangirls and talk about why they're so great sure. um, because i i've literally met like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people just through star wars and probably, I don't know, 60 or 70 percent of those people I've never even met in person. I've just met right. them through <laughs> blogging or social media or whatever, um, which is crazy awesome that we can do that now. Right. Um, and yeah, I just like to share my opinions on things on the Dorky Diva. And then I also have a Facebook page for it. And that's where I update a lot of what I'm doing. Um, the website doesn't get updated more than a few times a month um, just because I'm so busy. But it's easy for me to post a quick thing on Facebook and be like, hey, this is what I found today or this is what I'm working on and, and do sure. a quick update. Um, so, yeah, it's just a fun place for me to, like, share what I love to do in the Star Wars community. And for some weird reason, people like what I do. So I'm like, all right, well, I guess if they're enjoying it, I'll keep doing it. Um, right. and, and that seeing positive reaction um, makes me want to keep doing what I love to do because I'm like, Oh, that's cool that people are into this. And whenever, uh, I started doing my costuming posts, they got a lot of good feedback and I was like, Oh man, this makes me want to go build more costumes because people enjoy it. Right. So yeah, it's just kind of like a two way thing. Like I, I want to inspire other people, but also so many other people inspire me and it just keeps going. So I'm sure I'll be doing this for a long time. Right on. It's like your own little corner of the internet. Yeah, I love it. On the uh, my little my little special spot. <laughs> yeah. On the uh, costuming part, you're in the five hundred first. I am. Are you? Also and congrats to you. 
I'm I'm not in the Rebel Legion. So um, I have a Jedi costume. I know. Listen, listen, listen. listen. <laughs> um, I have a Jedi costume, but I never submitted it for approval. I don't really wear it a lot because I'm obsessed with my Shadow Scout, and I like wearing a helmet because I can give people funny faces while I'm taking pictures. Good point. Good point. Um, I respect that. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I do like my Jedi costume. I just never submitted it. But whenever Sabine is done, then she yes. will be a Rebel character. So I got a Rebel costume coming up soon. Um, and I that will definitely Good. be done by Celebration Orlando. Good. Hopefully even sooner than that. But, um, yep, I'm in the 501st. I've been in since I turned 18. On my 18th birthday, I woke up at midnight. And, well, yeah, I had gone to bed for a couple hours. And then I got up at midnight, submitted my pictures, got approved a few days later and it was the happiest time ever because I had wanted to join for so long right. because my mom and my brother are both in the Legion. And I just, I was always the loser straggler <laughs> at events like, Oh, you want to be the handler? Oh, you want to be the photographer? And I'm like, man, I just want to be a trooper. Right. And so I finally got to be a trooper and it's, and it's really a, fun. You've got a shadow scout. Is that, I your, do. is that your only costume you have in the Legion? Yes, Savannah. that is the only one. Gotta, um, gotta I pick it up. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I do have to say, it's really hard for me to pick, especially Imperial costumes um, that fit me. Because, oh, I, like point. I've said, I am obsessed with clones. I want to be a clone trooper so freaking bad, it hurts. Like, I have literally cried over this before. <laughs> I haven't done it recently, because I'm over it now. But a few years ago, um, my brother was working on his clone trooper costume, and then we also got a kit of armor to make for my dad. Well, my dad's not a Star Wars fan. Right. So we ended up selling the kit. I, I finished it and I worked on it. And just just uh, the, the icky <laughs> feeling of making a costume for somebody who doesn't like Star Wars and doesn't appreciate it. But that's cool. what you always wanted to be. It just, that's ugh, rough. That's it's rough. so sad. <laughs> it was so depressing. Um, it was really fun to work on it, though. And the person who has it now loves it and appreciates it. So that's great. But sure. it's just it's just one of those things where I would love to be a clone trooper and I can whip out those suckers fast. I did. Um, I did a full bomb squad trooper in eight days, that which is, is a little unheard of. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. It took me nine months. I had months. help. <laughs> I had help. I'll say I had help, um, which was amazing. But a lot of it I did on my own and it was it was tough. But I was so proud of how it turned out. So even though I don't really have the perfect tall body type for troopers and I don't really have the funds because I'm a poor college student to yeah, make the them are um, I yeah I just love helping people join the legion and I love helping them build their costumes and Ditto. a lot of people come to me and say hey I don't know how to make this I need help but I really want to be involved in the legion I'm like yo I'm your girl like let me help <laughs> you because it just makes me happy building them and I don't get to do it enough for myself so I get to do that and create things and help other people and that's what makes me really happy. Oh yeah. Um, I'm like so, that and I'm, where I'm at with Jedi. <laughs> yeah. I'm recruiting yeah. Jedi left and right. Yeah, just a swarm of them. You'll yes. have a whole you'll have a whole fleet of Jedi. Yes. Um, there are And then I'm working on four. Sabine, but I'm my my biggest issue is I am a perfectionist when it comes to my costumes and I'm I'm going to be honest Ditto. I'm a little bit of a costume snob and I'm totally I, all for I am too. like I'm totally all for cosplaying and wearing costumes for fun and having a great time like I'm not going to judge you if you're wearing a costume at a convention and having a great time but your costume might not be accurate. I'm sure. not going to judge you at all. Cosplay, I'm going to be like, "Yeah, go Legion. you. I'm so happy you're having a great time." But if you're going to be in the 501st Legion, I I have a level of um, they're called like, standards. Standards. That's what they're and, called. They're literally yeah. costume standards. <laughs> standards and perfectionism. And I think things should look as close to the movie as they can. And I, I want people to really consider their proportions. Like for Sabine, she is 5'4". I am 5'2". We have the same um, size. Sure. But I am, I'm putting lifts in my shoes. I'm also wearing, I'm going to wear, um, I'm pretty thin, but I'm going to wear like a waist trainer to really s like scrunch in my waist because her animated proportions are so far out there right. that I, I could never achieve them no matter how much I work out or whatever. <laughs> so I, I love putting in all these little details and I have brown eyes and she has brown eyes and I'm still getting contacts because mine are not the right shade of brown. Like that's right. how much detail I really 
want to put into this costume. And I I saw a bunch of my friends from the Tampa Bay squad of the 501st this past weekend. And they were like, oh, is Sabine almost done? And I'm like, bro, it ain't going to be done for a <laughs> while. Like, I put so much time and care into every little thing for sure. that it, it ends up taking me a long time. Um, and Sabine has a lot of different colors and details on it. And you know, the, the bomb squad trooper was pretty easy. I had a lot of reference images from the show. Sure. The, the shapes on the costume were very geometric and easy to paint, but um, Sabine's paint is a little more organic and a little more random. And there's a lot of colors. Yes. So it takes a lot more time for the paint to dry and do the next layer of paint, all that stuff. Um, so that's why it's taking me a little bit of, a little bit more time. And I don't really have a good working space at school cause I don't have my workshop that I have at home, right. but yeah, it's just one of those things like costuming should be super fun. But the fun thing for me is to be a perfectionist and make things look absolutely perfect. I had, sure. I had gone home this past weekend and I was looking at my Sabine helmet and then I watched the latest episode of rebels and I was like, Oh dang, my my helmet is off a shade and it, the orange was a touch too <laughs> yellow and it should have been a little more red. So I went back and I repainted it cause I was like, Nope, I gotta be perfect. Right. right. So, um, yeah, I'm always tweaking things to make it look better. See, I, I like that a lot. Like I've always said, like I'm a cosplayer. I've done cosplays and stuff. I have never considered the legions cosplay. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's different. just, it's, it's, it is it's, different. You know, there's, there's, there's a, there's rights we're talking about here with Lucasfilm, you know, like you can be sued. These are characters like it has right. to be. We have the CRL. We have costume standards that has mm -hmm. to be met. And, and you're representing this a huge exactly. franchise like you want to represent them well. Exactly. You don't want a tie pilot with like the belt coming off and the armor's unhinged. Like that's not, exactly uh, some kid exactly. is going to come and be like, oh, it's a tie. Wait a second. What's wrong here? You know, you're, right. you're messing with imaginations here, like on a real scale. Right. You know, like like and, this last weekend, I did a troop for Make a Wish. Oh you know, yeah. It's all over the news. There's a kid named Brady at West Palm Beach who wanted to become a Jedi, and they did a whole oh. big thing like Bat Kid in San Diego, but with Jedi. Oh, that is precious. And, you know, if somebody was wearing like a t-shirt tunic, like it wouldn't. The illusion's gone. It's so, yeah, it's totally I'm, gone. I'm right there. I'm right there with you. That's awesome. And oh man, that must have been an awesome troop. I love I doing Make a Wish events and just. It's, it's amazing when you do have that level of a costume standard and the kids actually believe oh, yes. that you're actually that character. Like that, thank God I have a helmet. That's actually why I picked my <laughs> Shadow Scout because it has a helmet because I have cried, especially in hospital troops or oh, autism yeah. walks. That's where it gets me. I cry all the time. And that's why I had to stop wearing my Jedi costume because my face is exposed in that and I just couldn't. Hold it together. I wore my Jedi at a hospital troop before I had my um, Shadow Scout finished. And I was like, I can't ever do another one of these again unless I have a helmet on because it just <laughs> rips my heart out. And I can't I can't be a, a cool Jedi when I'm over there crying in a corner. You know, I can at least hold it together if I have a helmet on because you get to experience like so many heartwarming moments. And, and like we said, you know, you're representing this this huge franchise. Mm -hmm. Lucasfilm. I mean, you want to be excellent and you want people to believe that you're like the real character. That's like Disney too. You know, Disney does a great job uh, with their meet and greets and different characters oh, yeah. that they have. And Good when you Lord. go meet whatever character you're meeting at Disney, you feel like you're meeting the real thing. And that's oh, yes. to me how it is for the 501st. You have to have that level of accuracy in order for people to kind of believe in this realm we've created. Absolutely. I lost my mind when I saw Shakti and Kit Fisto at Disney yes, World Yes, at once. Star Wars I Weekend. Just, yeah. I ran after them. I was like, oh my god, oh my god. And I'm like a 25-year-old man. Yeah, <laughs> they nailed seven. it with those two. And the makeup on Shakti oh, is just stunning. So, so stunning. So Yeah. Good. But yes, so... I think that I think that's all my questions. <laughs> that's great. Yes, I think we you, covered uh, all the bases. I talked about all the all the moments I've cried in Star Wars. Right, me too. I promise I don't cry a lot. I really don't. I cry uh, a lot in Star Wars. But like we said, Star Wars <laughs> does things to me. Oh yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, we co we covered a lot of ground, but uh, yeah, I cannot thank you enough for coming on. I appreciate yeah, thanks it. for having me. You're one of like the the big guests that I always wanted on because I know I could oh, fully yeah. talk to you about Star Wars. You can't really talk to a lot of people in this in depth, you know. Right. Um, we totally nerded out because when we yeah. started talking about Kiati Monday, I was like, all right, got to hold it back because right, I'm yeah. about to lose it. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. But yes, thank you so much for your time. Um, where can people find you online? You can find me um, on Facebook at facebook.com slash the dorky diva. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Savannah underscore Kiefer. And then my website is just the dorky diva.com. That is awesome. Thank you Yay. very much. Thank and... you.